Hillary Clinton sends an interesting subliminal message with her Christmas Twitter post. A left-wing writer claims that saying Merry Christmas is now code for F.U. And we'll look at the five biggest political losers of 2019. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. Hope you had a very Merry Christmas. Mine was great. Got some cool Batman stuff, which I'll probably show you guys. And we saw a number of movies, which is a big thing in our family to do. And on Monday, I'll probably review a couple of them. I used to do Movie Monday for those of you who have watched the show from the beginning. But we have so much politics going on that that segment has been getting left out. And I'd love to talk to you about a few. So probably on Monday, I think we'll do that. But for now, since it's Christmas week, I want to start off with someone who's not having a very Merry Christmas, because this is a time for religious observation and for coming together as a family and celebrating all that is good, and yet it seems to bring out the worst in several people, and some people, and in particular, those on the left that are just so bitter, the holiday season makes them even more bitter. And I don't know what that is, but I want to talk to you about one particular story. This is Amanda Marcotte, who is a writer for Left Wing Salon, that publication. And she came out this week and said that saying Merry Christmas has now become Trump code for FU. It's just bizarre. Here is the report from the Washington Times. It says Salon contributor Amanda Marcotte says Americans need to be on guard for the random Merry Christmas greeting in Trump's America because it serves as code for F.U. The left-wing publication's op-ed titled, In Trump's America, Christian is no longer a religious faith, it's white identity politics, lamented the consistent support for President Trump among right-leaning Christians. White identity politics. All right, this is Christmas week, and this is what she decides to write about. It's just, you can't celebrate Christmas anymore with the left wing because it's a Christian holiday. And of course, they're anti-Christian. They have to find something to attack. So now they're attacking the phrase, Merry Christmas. Here, here's more from the Washington Times. It says, the writer added that negative feedback to a previous Salam piece, how Donald Trump stole Christmas, was further proof that these people are taking what they supposedly believe in the birth celebration of their Lord and Savior and using it as a hurtful weapon. She then accused Fox News of spreading lies and warping its audience's behavior. Conservatives have increasingly embraced the phrase Merry Christmas to mean basically F you to anyone that they've deemed less than legitimate Americans, she wrote Monday. The left, they just don't think and act like we do. You know, this is, again, this is a season for coming together. And the left always talks about diversity, right, and inclusion. But what they mean is they don't mean diversity of opinion. They don't mean diversity of thought. They don't mean diversity of political views. You have to think and act like they do. Otherwise, you're on the outs. If you are a Christian these days, you're on the outs. And this column is just a, it's just a striking example and that was earlier in the week. Then on Christmas Day, actual Christmas Day, this same writer said that the Hallmark Channel is basically fascist propaganda now. This is, I mean, I, I just wonder what caused all of this bitterness to attack Christmas and Trump supporters and Christians in this manner. It's just, I don't, I don't even understand it. So now on the Christmas theme as well, I want to talk about Hillary Clinton because she posted on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve a picture. And it's bizarre because it's from the Clinton, the Bill Clinton presidential years. And she posted this tweet. She said, a Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Now this received some awesome reaction on Twitter. And I'll put the picture up again, because as some people noted, even the Christmas tree is crooked. So that sends a message right there to watch out for the Clintons when even their Christmas tree is crooked. I just thought that was funny. Just had to share that with you on Christmas week. And now I want to move on to Rachel Maddow over at MSNBC. 
because the left has become unhinged. They are so far out there with their politics of um, socialism, and we see that in the actual politicians, but the media has adopted that as well. They have people out there like Rachel Maddow that have gotten so far out there that other members of the media are forced to rein them in and forced to call them out. And you know that's bad when a publication like the Washington Post ends up calling out Rachel Maddow. And I find it hilarious. But what it is in this case is her fixation on the Steele dossier and how it's been so discredited, not from just political talking heads, but the inspector general and others who have investigated it. And this dossier is just, it's a political hit piece. And yet it became the basis for the FBI's warrants to spy on the Trump campaign, which then led to the Mueller investigation of Russia collusion and on and on in this fixation of the Democrats for impeachment. Well, it's been discredited. And most recently, just a few weeks ago, with Michael Horowitz's Inspector General report, we show that all the errors and omissions in the applications to spy on the Trump campaign were based on this document. It was an essential document, according to the report, and she stays with it. So the Washington Post finally called her out on her reliance to this document. And here's a report from the Daily Caller. It says, a columnist for the Washington Post blasted Rachel Maddow for her coverage of the infamous Steele dossier on Thursday, saying that MSNBC host engaged in a pattern of misleading and dishonest asymmetry in her reporting of the salacious document in the nearly three years since its publication. As part of the Russianist phase, Maddow became a clearinghouse for news increments regarding the dossier, writes Post Media columnist Eric Wimple in his fifth installment in a series reviewing the media's coverage of Steele's dossier. So Wemple is reviewing the Steele dossier, and I told you the Inspector General has already discredited it, and yet she continues to rely on it as a valuable piece of information, even though we know it was a political hit piece filled with inaccuracies and yet used as a substantial document for the FBI to spy. It's just ridiculous. Here's more from the Daily Caller. It says, Wimple laid out a timeline of Maddow's coverage of the dossier, noting that she tended to hype developments that cut in favor of Steele's reporting while ignoring information that undermined the ex-spy. When small bits of news arose in favor of the dossier, the franchise MSNBC host pumped air into them, wrote Wimple. At least some of her many fans surely came away from her broadcast thinking the dossier was a serious piece of investigative research, not a flim-flam, quick-twitch game of telephone outlined in the Horowitz report. She seemed to be rooting for the document, he noted. So, that's the media, that's left-wing media, that's Rachel Maddow. And next, I want to talk to you about 2019 and the biggest political losers, because I've got a list of five and I'd love for you to jump in the comments with your list of five, see if we agree, see if we disagree, see what I have that you don't, and see what I might have missed, all right? So this is in no particular order, but first I have to put on there Nancy Pelosi because this was not a good year for Pelosi and you know, with her impeachment statements and back and forth and not pushing legislation that they need to push, she just had a really bad year, and I want to sum it up. The, the biggest reason she's on this list is because she allowed herself to be muscled by the far left of her party. If you remember in March, she came out and she said that they would not, the Democrats would not pursue impeachment unless it was compelling, overwhelming, and bipartisan. Yet the pressure kept mounting, kept mounting, until she finally just rammed an impeachment through unprecedented in U.S. history, there has never been an impeachment where only one party has voted for it. That's never happened until now with Nancy Pelosi's Democrats. And that's why she makes the loser list. And the other fact is that she can't even put a coherent sentence together. If you remember this, this is her talking about the impeachment process. We are, we have, I have when we bring the bill, which is just so you know, there's a bill made in order by the Rules Committee that we can call up at any time in order to send it over to the Senate and to have a, 
provisions in there to pay for the for the impeachment, and then the next step, the, uh, the whatever you want to call it. So yes, yeah, so one minute she's against impeachment. There's no way we're going to do it unless it's bipartisan. Then she's pushing it through, rushing it through, because she says President Trump is an existential threat to the country. And now she's holding on to it again, slowing things down because they don't know what to do next. They have put themselves in a corner and they don't know what to do. So next on my list, and as you, anyone who's watched this show knows, one of my favorite guys to bash through this Democrat presidential campaign was Robert Francis O'Rourke. And my list would not be complete if he weren't on there. He has to be on there. And here is a little clip from 2019. This is our final chance. The scientists are absolutely unanimous on this, that we have no more than 12 years to take incredibly bold action on this crisis. Yep, that was the guy that was going to transform Texas, that was going to make it blue. And then, even after losing, he was going to transform America. He was the one that was going to bring down President Trump. He is the new Democrat anointed one. I mean, we saw him at the dentist. We saw him skateboarding. We even saw him changing a tire. Well, uh, Cynthia, I'm changing the tire on this truck. Yep, so that's Robert Francis. I'm glad he's gone. But he lives on in our memories, and he definitely makes our loser list for 2019. So next, I want to talk about impeachment, okay? Not Adam Schiff or Jerry Nadler. They're definitely honorable mentions, and they're probably on a lot of people's list. But I want to talk about impeachment in general, because this is biggest political losers of 2019. And of any of them, if we had to rank them, impeachment is the biggest political loser because the Democrats banked on it being their be-all, end-all, winning political move. I mean, they didn't think Tr President Trump was going to be elected, but then they went to the Mueller investigation and said, man, what, he's going to be out after that. He wasn't. He came back stronger. So then they bring up this impeachment in an unprecedented way that I just talked about, banking that the American people would jump on board, that this would be it for President Trump. And not only is it not it for the president, but the politics have been wrong for the Democrats every step of the way. They push this through. Public support for impeachment continues to go down. Public approval for the president continues to go up. It is the biggest political loser issue that I have seen in probably 20 years. It is just amazing. And yet the Democrats have driven it home. They are banking on it. And we may have a bunch of Democrats... Remember, there are 30 Democrats now in districts that are won by President Trump in 2016. They're running for re-election in Trump districts, and they voted for impeachment. So we'll see how that works out. Next, number four is the squad. So not anyone in particular. You know, this squad is Ayanna Presley and Ilhan Omar, and Rashida Tlaib, and of course, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who was a wealth of video commentary throughout the year. Here's just one. Even now, you know, when you put climate change on top of that, I know that I want to, you know, perhaps have um, one less child than I thought I would maybe have if, if I can even have a child biologically. I don't know. I mean, we can do a whole show on clips of them. It's just absolutely amazing and stunning the things they've said this year. So they have to be on the list. I mean, we, we could just go on and on from being afraid of a dishwasher to her saying 12 years to anti-Semitic comments to impeach the MF and just on and on from the squad. Their political clout was so high when they first got elected. It's like they ran the show or they thought they ran the show. And as you could see through the summer and through the fall, the squad has just gone down and down. And as a unit and as legislators, they are political losers. And finally, we have to wrap up with the media. It wouldn't be a complete list without them because as we saw with Rachel Maddow and MSNBC, and we see over and over again, the media have become the propaganda arm of the left and the Democrats, and they will jump on anything. 
They will jump on Russia collusion. They will jump on Ukraine and whistleblower and all the things that President Trump did without reporting the actual stories, the actual facts that go into making an honest journalistic news story. They were a complete failure in 2019, and it looks like they have no indication that they're going to change their ways. So folks, that's my list. That's my big top five political losers for 2019. I'm dying to hear yours, so please add them to the comments. That's our show for today. Please subscribe, and when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified, and we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-Minute News Hour. Okay, friends, just a little reminder before you go, and no, this does not count against my 13 minutes. Please hit the subscribe button below and tell your friends. And if you happen to miss our last show, you can check it out right here. And also for great conservative news and commentary, please check out GOPUSA.com. All right, folks, we'll see you on the next show. Have a great day.